The world of Parasport is more than medals and accolades. Join hosts Greg Westlake and Travis Murau as they delve deeper and examine the important issues impacting sport. This is Beyond the Field. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Travis Morrell. Today, we're talking money. More specifically, the gaps in funding that remain between the Paralympics and Olympics. A little later in the show, Greg talks to Paralympian and Canadian Senator Chantel Petitclerc about her decades-long battle for equality. But first, my conversation with recently retired Tokyo gold medalist shot putter, Greg Stewart. Greg, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm, uh, I'm pretty pumped to have a good chat with you. Now, Greg, you recently retired from shot put after a fantastic career, gold in Tokyo in 2020. What went into that decision to retire on top? I think one of the biggest things that brought my decision in is just passion. Um, you know, we were having a discussion about this the other day and it was, I love hanging out with my friends. I love hanging out with like my companions, all of us that have, you know, been training and going through the same stuff and, you know, experiencing all that. And I love that, but that's not realistic. I'm not always with those people. And I've just found that the more time I was at home, um, I just didn't have the passion. I didn't have the drive to go in and train and be a part of um, something that I didn't really have the passion for anymore. So I, I thought more and more to myself, you know, I've been in sport for 20 years. I've, you know, I've done a, a lot of really incredible things, met incredible people. I've had incredible coaches. And I think it was just time to uh, take, a, take a step forward in my career and step away from sport and, you know, like I said, you know, I kind of got a gold medal already. So, you know, what more can I uh, strive for? Would you say that financial support or maybe a lack of financial support played a role in your decision to retire? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as great as it is to be able to compete for Canada, you know, compete for my community and everything like that, I still have to pay my bills. Right. Uh, I am a carded athlete. You know, I do have that supplemental income, but let's be honest. Let's look at what's the average. So my supplemental income is about sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month at a full senior card. Right. Well, I myself, I'm seven foot two. I have one arm. I eat about a thousand dollars of food every month. So let's take that. We'll subtract that. Now I'm left with seven hundred dollars. Tell me one place in Canada where you can rent for seven hundred dollars a month. It doesn't exist, right? And so I had to find something else in order to supplement my income because not only this, how many athletes do we know that leave training, that leave competition, that are in athletic debt? And I would say that's quite a majority. That if they're not living at home, and they're not kind of bumming off a couch or living with multiple people. And when they're finished competing, aren't in a place where they're in a deficit, there's there's not many out there. And, you know, one of the reasons why I did choose to step down from uh, competing, or not step down, because I'm definitely stepping up and continuing to, continuing to move forward, um, but it's that I still need to pay my bills. You know, I still need to create an income where even after my gold medal and everything like that, I still want to continue my life. I don't want to be backtracking in order to move forward so it's a it's it's a very interesting question it's a very difficult one to answer sometimes um, but i definitely think my retirement what may have been money motivated for sure oh that's heartbreaking to hear especially from a guy who's like at the top of his sport world-class athlete like the lack of financial support will play a decision is really tough to hear so what would you say are some of the biggest gaps between funding for able-bodied athletes versus para-athletes? I think one of the biggest differences is just recognition. Um, I don't think people really take the time to recognize what differences are going on. Um, so one of the things is after winning a Paralympic gold medal, I didn't receive any financial support. We did just recently actually um, um, get a, a bursary or a support from the Canadian Paralympic Committee as well as the Canadian Olympic Committee. It was a $5,000, which is great. Um, but if you were to compare it to that of the Olympic stream, after winning an Olympic gold medal, I think you get 20K or 25K. Yeah, so just to make it clear, when an able-bodied athlete wins a gold medal at the Olympics, they receive $20,000. 
A silver medal is worth 15,000, and I believe a bronze medal is worth 10,000. And as Paralympians, we don't see that same cash reward, do we? Yeah, no, we, uh, if we're lucky, we might get a high five or a handshake. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, we don't see that same financial support. And I think that's quite challenging because if I think about Paralympic athletes, there's a lot of stress financially just to compete. Like, you know, what is the cost these days for a wheelchair? Oh my God, it's between seven and $11,000 per chair these days. Right? If you want to compete as a athletics, um, like a wheelchair racer, those things range anywhere from like five to $35,000, right? And that money's got to come from somewhere. And so if you think like we are investing in our sport so that we can achieve great things, yet when we achieve great things, we don't have the financial support to help support that, that got us to that point. And so if we are able to recognize and actually take a minute and look at the big picture, look at like, what is the process of things? How are we going about supporting our athletes? Well, I see we're giving this. Okay, well, we're not giving that. Okay, let's look at how we can make that work, right? And I think if we can take more time to recognize the differences and start to support throughout that process, I think we can start seeing some big changes in terms of how athletes are supported. If you were compensated the same as an Olympic athlete after your gold in Tokyo, if you received that $20,000, would that have affected your decision to retire? Well, Travis, that's a pretty uh, deep question. I think probably, uh, I, I think I'd probably lengthen my decision in terms of retirement. Um, because 20K is a lot of money. Like, think about that. If you think about, again, the $1,700 we get um, through Sport Canada, well, that's another 10 to 12 more months. That's another full year of training. And so, you know, potentially, yeah, you know, I might look at that again and being like, okay, well, I know I'm supported for the next year. Uh, let's see what we can create. But, you know, that that's not the case. So, but you know what? I, I, I do want to say this. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful that we do have carded athletes, that I am a carded athlete. I couldn't imagine if we did this without anything. And I think sometimes we get so caught up that financially we have to be better, we have to be better, and there's no question we do, but thank goodness that we have something. I couldn't agree with you more, but I have to say, when I hear that $20,000, all I can think of is that's two rugby chairs, that's four more years of playing. Exactly, exactly, so. That tells you how important money is to us. Yeah. Thank you again for coming on. It's been a pleasure and best of luck in all your future uh, adventures and challenges. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you doing this, you know, having creating a voice again for many of us um, that either don't know how to speak up or for those that are starting to. And, uh, you know, this is a great place to start. So thanks again. Beyond the Field will return. This is Beyond the Field. Welcome back, I'm Greg Westlake. Before the break, Travis chatted with Greg Stewart about the disparity in funding between Paralympians and Olympians and the hardships that causes. Paralympic champion turned Canadian Senator Chantal Petitclerc knows those hardships all too well. I spoke with the Senator about those challenges and why now is the time for change. Chantelle Petty, Claire, thank you so much for doing this today. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to see you. Absolutely, great to see you as well. And you know, today we're talking about a topic that doesn't get talked about enough, especially in mainstream media, and you're the perfect person to talk to about it. And it's the discrepancy in funding between Olympic athletes and Paralympic athletes. And, and you've had an amazing career, won medals all over the world. I just want you to kind of take me back and, and, and tell the viewers a little bit about the funding discrepancies you saw as you were an active competitor. Well, I think when I started wheelchair racing, uh, the, uh, you know, the funding was a big, big problem because, uh, you, well, first you needed funding for equipment. And that's the thing with many, many Paralympic sport is that you need specific high performance ex equipment and, and we're not talking about hundreds of dollars, it's thousands. So that's one thing. Then, you know, the province, Quebec in my case, and Canada will cover some expenses. When I started training and racing, 
I had a coach, um, I had a few events a year, but very quickly you realize that if you want to be good, if you have a potential, and if you want to make it to the top, well, you need more than one training camp a year. Maybe you need your coach, but you need also a weightlifting coach, you need a physiotherapist, you need a sports psychologist, a nutritionist, and most of these things, uh, beginning of the 90s, we had to pay for it. We had to cover all of that. And, and so we're talking twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year. And like all athletes, but I think it's even worse for Paralympians, if you're training full-time, you can't work. And uh, you, you, know, you can't have a full-time job while training full-time and racing. So the challenge was there. The other area is a sensitive topic. I know how I feel about it, but the big discrepancy is kind of the Olympian medal bonus, the 20,000, 15,000, and 10,000 for a gold, silver, and bronze medal. Paralympians currently don't get that. I know how I feel about it. How do you feel about it? Well, I think that the money for medal, the performance bonuses, uh, any way we want to call it, the fact that Olympians in Canada, when they come back after working hard, after winning a medal, they come back home and, and they get a performance bonus, like, like many, many countries and Paralympians with the same uh, training, the same effort, the same level of, uh, of pressure, come back with the same medal and don't get that recognition. To me, this is wrong at, at so many, many levels. You know, I love how you put that and I agree with you know, everything you said, so thank you for that. Uh, I'm gonna throw a number at you and I, and I wanna see what it means to you. 375,000. Yes, that I believe is uh, how much it would have cost for the last Paralympic Games uh, to cover the medal for, for our okay. Paralympian. Chantal, that is the number that I believe you would have been compensated oh, in it? total for all of your medals, <laughs> $375,000. So how does that make you feel when you hear that? Now that may, it made me feel, ba feel bad to think it, you know, it was a number for, for all Paralympians the last games, but thinking it's the money I will never see, uh, it make, makes me feel even worse. <laughs> well, I, you know, and, and the truth is, it's not why we're doing it, but it's just a question of equity, of, of respect. Uh, it's also a question of saying, you know, we are in this country where uh, politically we keep saying, uh, you know, inclusion, diversity, nothing about us without us. We passed the bills and now I'm talking with my Senate uh, hat. And then, you know, we need to walk the talk. And this, this is what we're not doing. When we're saying, yes, of course, we respect the Paralympians. Yes, of course, uh, you're so great. Let's be there. Let's have the reception. Let's send the letters signed by the politician. But we need to do it right because it doesn't mean anything if actions don't follow what is being said. Uh, speaking of wearing your senator's hat, you, you know, you spoke on this issue to Parliament. Um, why did you want to take it to that level and make it such a big deal? Well, I wanted to, um, I want to see action. So I really felt that, uh, you know, being in the Senate, having a voice, being able to ask direct question to the representative of the government, I had this responsibility, especially because it's been a long time. It's been games and games and games and, and it's not happening. And, and I just want, you know, I just want this conversation to happen. I just think that uh, we, we just need to hold those who make that decision accountable and being able to force them to say, yes, we're doing it, or no, we're not doing it, and then it's on you. Right, and we're so lucky to have somebody like you as an advocate for, for Paralympians, and honestly, just amateur sport in general, able-bodied and disabled, so thank you for, 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 for all of that. Looking into the future, do you, do you think there's gonna be some change coming up in the near future or, or down the road? Well, I think there will be. There are challenges. Uh, we need to figure out how to make it happen, but uh, I think we will make it happen. I don't know if it's going to be Paris, I'm hoping, but, uh, and if not, I will keep asking the questions.
That's awesome. Chantel, I uh, just want to thank you. You're somebody I've looked up to kind of my, my whole career and, and just, you know, you fight for all the right things and you fight for amateur athletes and I've learned so much from you. Um, so just thank you and we're very lucky to have you representing us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Beyond the Field will return. You're watching Beyond the Field. Welcome back. I'm Travis Morrell, and I'm joined by my co-host Greg Westlake to talk about the funding disparity between the Paralympics and Olympics. Greg, the topic of performance bonuses came up in both interviews with a performance bonus of 20,000 for gold, 15,000 for silver, and 10,000 for bronze going to Olympians. Would that have made a difference to you as a Paralympian if you'd received that bonus? You know, it's a great question, and without trying to sound like a complete jerk here, because I appreciate all the advantages we're given as athletes in the life we get to live. That being said, the money part doesn't make a difference. Well, what I find makes a difference is the embarrassment. It's embarrassing to have to go around and tell people, I've won a Paralympic gold medal, I've won two silver medals, I've won a bronze medal, I've been to five games, and I got paid zero dollars for it. It's embarrassing for the government to say, we, we value an Olympic medal more than we value a Paralympic medal. So th that's just how I feel. For me, it's just embarrassing to be a part of the Canadian government or, or part of the governing bodies that, that have the, the funds to release and not be able to do it. So for me, it's just a, a point of pride. I would like to be able to walk around and know that Canadians value the work that we put in equal to Olympians. Uh, am I crazy off on that or like would you be anywhere near that? I have to say I completely agree with you okay. where it breaks my heart when I see an athlete like Greg Stewart, who's a monster in his sport, like the best shot putter in the world, gold medalist, should have a long career ahead of him, and he's forced to scrimp and save and beg for money when he should be well supported and well funded by, by all of us, and should just be a pride of Canada. And to see a guy like that having to struggle for funds is it breaks my heart as an athlete. Have you ever seen guys within your sport have to drop out to support their family, to support their careers? You know what? I was just going to ask you the same question, and absolutely, I think it's a common theme in Paralympic sport. It is there's a small percentage of people that kind of quote unquote make it and get corporate sponsorships and, and can really make a good annual living. But outside of that top few percent, everybody struggles and everybody's a student or everybody has a job or everyone's doing something on the side to really hustle and make their dream work. Because playing for Canada is the ultimate. Winning medals and being up there and hearing the Canadian anthem and wearing the, the crest on your chest. Like I live for that moment, but it has to make sense. And at some point, if you can't pay your rent and you can't afford a nice lifestyle, what are we doing here? I, you know, I can't help but look at the performance some of our athletes turn in and what they're able to accomplish with the support they do get and still having to juggle their second jobs, mortgages, kids, all of those stressors. I'm wondering if we supported them even more, what would our performances look like then? Would we see even more medals? Are we leaving medals on the table by not supporting our athletes in the right way? Well, I think we are for sure. And you know, but it has to be long-term systemic change that promotes growth for the sport. And right now, what I hate about the bonus structure is that's a, that's a payment after the fact. That's not actually getting anyone to the medals. That's a reward once you get your medal. And, and, and that's the thing that drives me crazy is we're leaving medals on the table because we're not even getting people there. And so it's a nice little stipend at the end, but I don't think anyone's retiring off $20,000. So I think we need way more partnerships. And when I talked to Chantal Petitclair, Senator of Canada, she said we need, we need private organizations involved. We need corporate Canada to get involved. And that's what I see as well. Like over the course of my career, I've been so lucky to be a hockey player where I was able to get some corporate sponsorship. And really that's where I made my money and really funded my dream. As a rugby player, and I wonder for a lot of people who play some sports that maybe aren't as popular in Canada, what's it like finding a corporate sponsor? I mean, like you said before, for the very top athletes in our sport, there's funding opportunities available. For the vast majority of us, I mean, you've really got to hustle on your own. And it makes things even more challenging, and it makes it tough to justify sometimes to your family, to your friends, exactly what you're doing and how you're doing it, especially when you want to play long careers like I do. I mean, 20 years of a grind, is uh, it's tough to justify sometimes. And I think a lot of athletes are seeing those challenges. Well, and the one thing for me as well is just, when you're young, you don't mind it as much. I, I never minded being 22 years old saying, yeah, I'm making a carding check, getting my school paid for, that's enough for now. 
But as you get older, you want to get married, you want to have a kid, you, you know, you want to start saving, you want to be a homeowner, you want all these things. And it's still the same pay as when you're 22. And all of a sudden when you're 32, it's not as fun. And it's not as cool to go around and, and, and live, by, live that way. And that's, that's why we lose athletes early in sport. And so I know you asked me, but like, have you had any, any close friends have to exit? That's the brutal thing is watching an athlete retire because they can't afford to keep playing. And that'll leave a hole in your team that's really hard to fill when you've got a guy who's in the prime of his career or what you think is the prime of his career leaving the sport. And we've had that in the past and it's been really tough to deal with as a team where you just got to band together and pick up the slack. But for sure, some funding would make all the difference in the world to sports like ours. It is so much more expensive to be a Paralympic athlete, and that's why we need so many more uh, funds in place just for equipment so that kids can go out there and have a good first experience. Because if there's anything we know, so if you don't have a good first experience, you'll never go back and play the sport again. Well, Greg, I couldn't agree, agree with you more. And funding disparity continues to be a huge issue for Paralympic sports. But that's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Field. Hosts, Greg Westlake, Travis Murau, producer, Ted Cooper, associate producer, Alex Smythe, director of photography and senior editor, Matthew McGurk, videographers, Norman Germain, Lloyd Dorward, editors, Nathan Clement, Daniel Waldman, narration, Bill Hunt, media accessibility specialist, Ron Rickford, audio post, Mark Phoenix, color, Adam Kemp, graphics, Mike Smith, Andrew Antonello, senior producer, Michelle Dudas, President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2022, Accessible Media, Inc.